First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How recognizing. How do they try to turn a guard? Well, prison, uh, correctional officer. Sorry, I apologize. Uh, but correctional officer. Uh How are you guys doing today? Welcome to another episode of Tier Talk. Guys, there's a great article on Corrections One that is written by Marion Myers. She's a third year medical student at the University of Washington School of Medicine. And she wrote an article about frequently asked questions for correctional officers related to COVID. Now I did post the article on my Tear Talk Facebook page and I also have the complete article. I copied it in the description of this uh, video. But I just wanna read this to you guys real quick and hopefully if we're lucky today, Connie will also go a little further into each one of these questions. But these are gonna be frequently asked questions and they're gonna deal with protective gear and officer safety. An, N an N95 mask is designed to form a seal around the nose and mouth, preventing airborne particles from reaching the wearer of the mask. They're commonly used in healthcare, construction, or other jobs that expose workers to dust and small particles. Prior to the utilization of an N95 mask, users undergo fit testing to assure that the mask is effective. N95 masks differ from surgical masks because they have a tighter fit and provide additional protection from airborne particles, while a surgical mask only provides droplet protection. Surgical masks, which are also might be called dust masks, are designed to protect against sneezes, fluids, or splatters that may contain germs. Surgical masks don't protect against the inhalation of germs in the air, which the N95 mask protects against. Healthcare providers will use N95 masks to treat patients with respiratory symptoms such as coughing and sneezing to help prevent transmission of disease. Surgical masks, which also might be called dusk masks, are designed to protect against sneezes, fluids or splatters that may contain germs. Patients with symptoms may be asked to wear a mask so that they reduce the number of germs they cough or sneeze onto people and surfaces near them. Possibly. Certain facial hairs prevent the N95 from fitting correctly. Facial hair should be completely contained within the N95 mask boundaries. See the image below for guidance. Surgical mask, dust mask don't require you to be clean shaven. I'm going to post a picture. Now, normally N95 masks are intended for single use and should not be shared. Because of the national emergency, the CDC has posted National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health guidelines for extended use and limited reuse of N95 masks. Read more on stretching your surface supplies of N95 respirators. Ventilators are machines that breathe automatically for a patient while they are sedated. They are used in ICUs when patients are unable to get enough oxygen on their own and during surgery when a patient is under anesthesia. COVID-19 targets the lungs, leading to complications like pneumonia and acute respiratory distress syndrome, conditions which may cause a patient to need a ventilator to breathe for them while their body is fighting the infection. Currently, hospitals have ventilators proportional to the number of beds they have. For example, a 150-bed hospital may have 20 ventilators. This has worked so far because not every hospitalized patient needs a ventilator, but if a lot of patients who need respiratory support are admitted, eventually there won't be enough machines for every patient. If a large number of patients are admitted to the hospital all at once, once, the system will get overwhelmed. Exponential growth is growth that increases even more rapidly the more cases that are present. Therefore, if a case are doubling every day, one person will become two, then four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, and so on. Small numbers will become much larger in a short period of time without any intervention. For example, one infected person will lead to 128 in a week. Then in two weeks, there'll be 16,384 
sick people. Guys, these are just some frequently asked questions. We'd love your thoughts. Hopefully, Connie will be able to dive a little deeper into this. But um, as always, guys, thinking of you guys and trying to give you as much information as I can. Stay safe.